with a fast processor, multiple SSD options, multiple NIC options, and even the option to add a GPU, this compact PC might be one of the more interesting ones we've looked at. And since it's made by Dell, you've definitely heard of the company that makes this. We have a ton to go over today, so let's get into what makes the Dell Precision 3260 Compact extra exciting. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the Dell Precision 3260 Compact. Now this is technically not a Project Tiny Mini micro node, but it is probably Dell's entry into that class of system, if not maybe even a little bit higher end. If you don't know this, we have an entire series that we have tested the one liter PCs from Lenovo, HP, and Dell, and we've done, I don't know, dozens of reviews at this point. But I also wanted to kind of bring that series back in 2025, along with some of the adjacent things that we really should be looking at. And one example of that is this Dell Precision 3260 Compact. Now it's not a micro, but it's called compact because it is a little bit bigger. And this is not the newest generation by any means with the 12th and 13th gen Intel core processors, but it also is starting to offer a better value. So my thought was, why don't we go and see what we can make out of the system, which we definitely got some interesting things like adding five gig ethernet. We finally managed to get 96 gigabytes working, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And, uh, and I'm gonna show you some things that we are kind of just totally perplexed by. But before we get too far, I do wanna say thank you to all of our STH YouTube members for supporting our series like this. We did buy the system. We also buy by the way, bought the 3240 Compact, and we are gonna have, uh, we actually bought a couple of those, and we are gonna have another video in a little bit on those as well, and I can't wait for that one. But in the meantime, let's get to the hardware on this, and let me just kind of show you all the cool things about the 3260 Compact. Okay, so let's talk about the overall size of the system because it is larger than a one liter system. It's about 190 millimeters tall. The depth of it, I think is about 178 millimeters and the height of it is uh, just under 72 millimeters if I remember that right. And one cool thing that Dell does before we get to all the ports and stuff is that there are rubber feet both on this side so you can actually go stand up like a little tower or you can go put it on its end like this and you have rubber feet again. And there's also mounting on the back. So if you, they have like mounts that you can go and mount these to the back of a monitor or a TV or something like that. And so there's a whole bunch of different mounting and just orientation options. One little kind of fun thing is that if you did go back to our old Project 10 Mini Micro series where we looked at like kind of much older systems, Dell actually had a logo that would rotate on some of those. You actually like pull it out and rotate it. So that way you didn't end up in this situation where you have like a Dell logo and a model name and they're kind of like offset based on the different, uh, you know, orientations that you might put this in. Now on the front, there's a power button that can tell you that it's powered on, but it can also show you with blinky lights that you've done something wrong, which we ran into. We'll show you that in a little bit. There's also the hard drive activity, but really the big thing is that there's a line in or a line out, which is a reconfigurable port. There's also a headset jack, which is kind of cool. Then we get a USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is a 10 gigabit USB port type A. And then we get a type C port, which is our two by two 20 gigabit per second port. And the cool thing is that that type C port and the type A port, they're both labeled with the 10 and 20. So you know exactly how fast they are. On this side, there's pretty much nothing. There's some rubber feet over there. On the top though, this is one of the most important things, especially if you're gonna buy these U's that you should look at. You're gonna see, especially over here, that we have a Core i5 processor. Our system has a a Core i5-12500, which is important because it means that we don't have vPro. So you're not gonna see vPro branding anywhere on this. The other thing you will see though, is that we do get a Windows Pro license. And so you're gonna see the little Windows hologram right here. And that's important to look at if you do want Windows to run as an operating system, because that means you probably have a OEM license that's activated on the system. This system originally came with Windows 10, but we upgraded it successfully to Windows 11 Pro. Okay, now looking at the back, um, there are some crazy things here. I'm gonna show you what's going on. So first thing we get our 7.4 millimeter Dell power jack. Now this I think does sense for Dell power supply. So something to keep in mind. The power supply by the way is huge. It's a 180 watt unit. So uh, yeah, it's big. There are also other versions of this with 240 watts, especially if you're gonna have a bigger GPU. So on the bottom here, we get our three display port outputs and then we get four USB type A ports. Now, one of the nice things is that you can see very easily that on the top, we have five gigabit per second USB three ports. And on the bottom, we have 10 gigabit per second USB ports. To every PC manufacturer out there, please label your ports just like this. This is so useful and it seems so simple to do. I don't know why everybody doesn't do it. Next to that, we get a network port. Now this is an Intel 
i219LM port because it is a one gigabit per second port. It's not two and a half gig, which is kind of a bummer. Now, there are options to go and put higher speed networking in here if, uh, if you really wanted to. We'll talk about those in a second. But one of the things that you're also gonna see is that we have a low profile PCIe slot. So now at this point, you're probably thinking, oh, I can put anything in there I want. And the answer to that is, uh, well, kind of. Getting inside the system is super easy. You have a little thumb screw, which is a captive screw. And then all you do is you just slide off the top and you're ready to go. And with that, let's get inside the system. Okay, so looking inside the system, this looks like a tiny mini micro node that has just grown up and is much larger. And on the top, you have this fan trap. You just pop it off. It takes a couple seconds and there's a four pin power header for the fan. So it's super easy to go and service this whole thing. It's gonna be very familiar for most folks that have ever touched inside a PC before. Now I will note that there are versions of this with much taller heat sinks. Unfortunately, we didn't get one and that was just kind of a, I guess an error on what we bought. We should have bought a different unit, uh, frankly, but this is the one that we have. Next to that, we have two SO DIMM slots. Now, when we originally got the system, we had a total of 16 gigabytes of memory. We've eventually gotten it up to 96 gigabytes of memory, but we're gonna talk about why that process kind of stunk later in our key lessons learned. Also inside, there's a little tiny speaker that you just pop out. Okay, now below that, we have uh, probably the worst SSD, but it's a 256 gigabyte M.2 30 SSD. There's another slot here as well on the bottom for an M.2 SSD, and both slots can take up to M.2 2280. They're PCIe Gen 4 slots, and something that I personally think is awesome about this setup versus a tiny mini micro setup is that you have plenty of room if you wanted to go add a heatsink or a at least a SSD with a heatsink on it for better cooling. You can do that in a platform like this because you just have so much room. The storage, however, doesn't end there. You can see that we have a little tiny connector here, which is our SATA connector. This uses the same cable that the Dell Micro series uses, and you can go and put a little SATA SSD in this as well. Now we don't have a carrier or anything like that for it, and we don't have this cable, but you could go do that if you wanted. And that gives you the opportunity to go find that part and then add a SATA SSD, and then use that for an OS, and then two SSDs for your storage. We'll let you look at the options, but there are a number of other headers here. So there are things that you can upgrade and depending on the system, especially if you buy it used, you may already have some of these options. In terms of Wi-Fi, frankly, uh, the range on the system was not great and it has a pretty decent card. This has an Intel AX. To 11, which is a Wi-Fi 6E card, but you'll notice that nowhere in the system do we have any antennas. And kind of the stranger thing about that is the fact that it's not just that we don't have antennas, uh, we don't even have the antenna leads plugged in. So of course, if you do want good Wi-Fi, you're gonna wanna have antennas. So what you would do is you would plug the little tiny parts that suck to go and connect over on the Wi-Fi card here. And then you would route your cable to the back of the chassis. And then you can see that we have these like two little punch outs here. And that's where you go put your external antennas. So this is kind of a weird unit because we did get the Wi-Fi 6E card and a good one. But on the other hand, we didn't get antennas. So the Wi-Fi on it was not great. The last thing I wanted to point out is that there is this really cool low profile slot that you just take this, uh, just undo this little thumb thing here and it pops out, it's totally toolless. So you don't have to go and, you know, screw around with a screwdriver, I guess. Uh, and that makes servicing something here super easy. Now, the problem with this design is the fact that of course there is a riser required. Inside here, you can see that we have a PCIe Gen 4 by eight slot, which means we get eight lanes, which is awesome. One of the challenges with this design though, is that the PCIe slot is so close to the chassis that the vast majority of PCIe cards won't fit. In fact, most PCIe risers won't fit either. But if you do have the specific Dell riser, you could go and put not just a small card in here, but you could put a card that has like a double width cooler maybe, and that's kind of interesting, right? You get that extra room to go and put a card here and that gives you a lot of power, gives you a lot of cooling capacity. And overall, I think that's one of the big benefits of a system like this. If we're gonna go back to our HP, sure, this is cool because it has a G-Force in it and all that kind of stuff. But one of the challenges is this is so much heat and just so many components in a little platform like this that like, you know, I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger. And that's really what this solves. Now, in terms of GPUs, probably the best you're gonna find is an NVIDIA like T1000 in this generation. I think eventually they put like an RTX 3000, like six gig card in here as well. But frankly, finding the GPUs outside of that T1000 are pretty hard. But I also think we should be totally transparent here. And if you have something like a T1000 or 
especially one of the smaller GPUs. Frankly, a lot of the integrated graphics are so good these days that a modern integrated graphics PC is gonna have as much performance as a lot of these. Now, of course, if you just need to run like a CUDA application, then you don't necessarily need integrated graphics and you need a you know CUDA GPU. That's why you need NVIDIA GPU. I totally get that. But on the other hand, uh, you know the integrated graphics are on a tear right now. Now in our key lessons learned, I'm gonna show you our experience of installing a five gigabit NIC into this. I'm just gonna kind of do all of our customization over there because there's some stuff that I wanna get to because we ran into some issues. But with that, let's talk about the performance before getting to our power consumption. Now inside the system, we have an Intel Core i5-12500. Now this is just the vanilla 12500, and that's very important because if you wanted something like vPro, you're gonna need to upgrade to the 12600 or the Core i5-12600. vPro gives you things like remote manageability, and that is a very good reason that I think a lot of folks are gonna want a higher end SKU than what we have. We just got this, I guess, on a deal back in the day. And so that's why we have the 12500. But the other advantage, I guess, of that Core i5 is that this is a all P-Core CPU. So we have six cores, P-Cores and 12 threads. Of course, these are Alder Lake. So, you know, we have a faster P-Core than in previous generations, which is awesome. But the 12th generation Core was also the one that we got E-Cores mixed into some SKUs, especially things like the Core i9. So if you're getting a 12th gen Core i7 or Core i9, you're gonna have P cores and E cores, which for some folks, they just don't like the scheduling challenges, especially if you're trying to do something like run VMware ESXi, that would be a challenge because you have uh, heterogeneous cores, which ESXi just does not like. Now I'm talking about the 12th generation here, but if you did get a 13th generation core processor, then if you have something that's a Core i5 or higher, you're gonna run into that P plus E core thing as well. Now, of course, they're faster CPUs because they have heterogeneous cores and the E cores are actually pretty useful these days. But on the other hand, if you just want all P cores, then you could definitely look into that Alder Lake generation for that. Now, also because we have a larger chassis, we're able to cool up to a 65 watt CPU and that 65 watt TDP CPU gives us more performance than a lot of the tiny mini micros at 35 watts. Now, in terms of power consumption, this is pretty standard at about eight to 12 watts at idle. Now, of course, because of Windows, you know, you do see the power consumption go up and down every once in a while. And the idle noise was about 34 to 36 dBA in our 32 dBA noise floor studio. Now, when we ran this thing at 100% load, it would hit about 110 to 115 watts. And over time, that would drop down to about 85 watts, but the noise would only go maybe 36 to 38 dBA. So overall, this was very quiet. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. Okay, for our key lessons learned, um, you know, I think the system's awesome, but I think the bigger thing is really what happened when we tried to upgrade this. So a couple things here. First, when we tried to upgrade the RAM, because 16 gigabytes just frankly seems too small for these days. So when we tried upgrading the RAM, if you just wanted to add another 16 gig DIMM, that gives you dual channel memory, and that's certainly better. 32 gigabytes was super easy. Now, when we went up to 96 gigabytes, we found that this power button started blinking amber, two amber blinks, and I think four white blinks at us. And that means that there's a memory challenge. So because 96 gigabytes was giving us issues, we uninstalled the two 48 gig dims. We put in two 32 gig dims just to test that we could get 64 gigabytes working. And that worked absolutely no problem. And when we updated the firmware to the newest firmware in BIOS, we found that the 96 gigabyte dims finally worked. So if if you do get a system like this and you do want to upgrade it to 96 gigabytes of memory, I think you probably want something bigger than a Core i5 six core processor for that. But if you did want to do it, what I would say is make sure that you're updating to the newest versions of the BIOS and firmware, because that's what allowed us to actually get 96 gigabytes to work no problem. Now, in terms of the M.2 slots, just a couple fun things here. So uh, first off, if you wanted to install something like a second uh, SSD, like we put this crucial P5 plus in there, which is a two terabyte drive, just to go and add an extra, you know, extra bit of storage because we have a 256 gig, super tiny boot drive here. Uh, you know, that's totally possible, super easy to do. And of course I mentioned earlier that you could add a heatsink version of the SSDs in there for even better probably performance and cooling. But of course, if I tell you guys that, hey, you have a one gig networking system in 2025, you're gonna 
say, uh, Patrick, that sucks. And that's totally true. So my first thought was we should go and take a 10 gig adapter, put it in here. And so we had this Giga Plus adapter, which I had this thought, I was like, oh, just go plug it in, easy peasy. We're gonna get 10 gig networking, awesome. And uh, the challenge was that when we opened it up, I kind of had forgotten that we didn't get one with a riser in it. And so that wasn't possible because we don't have that riser. We will have that in a future uh, version for the 3240, but for the 3260, we just didn't have that riser. So of course my next thought was we could take the card, install it, and then use a riser cable to go and take that by eight slot and get it all the way up to the NIC. But then, um, well, that didn't really work because there's not enough room between the PCIe slot on the motherboard and the chassis to actually go put any of those adapters because they all assume that you have a little bit of extra room and that the PCIe slot is not right up against a chassis, right? So it's kind of just a little bit weird and that kind of frankly deflated me quite a bit. So what we did instead was we added a IOCrest 5 gigabit. So it's a Realtek 5 gigabit network thing. And it also does, by the way, two and a half gig ethernet, does one gig, all that kind of stuff. So it kind of gives you a little bit of different options, right? And we installed that into one of the M.2 slots and had absolutely no issue because we were able to go put a low profile bracket, throw that thing into the back of the system and we're ready to go. And that's super useful because that gives you a one gig NIC that you can use for management, it gives you a five gig NIC for things like uh, go fast storage network or something like that. And it gives you, I, I think a pretty nice mix. Now there are 10 gig adapters as well that you could put in that M.2 slot. And so overall, I think that that might be the answer for a system like this. And frankly, just the overall size of the system makes it very easy. And if you had a 3D printer and you want to do a little engineering, you could probably 3D print a bracket that would allow you to mount the five gig port to the optional slot here and that would still leave the other slot open for well, whatever the heck you wanted and especially if you found a version with a gpu or you know just the add-in card slot that would give you the ability to have five gig networking or maybe 10 gig networking from the m.2 and then also have a nice slotted option for a gpu or something else so there's definitely a lot of stuff that you could do with this and uh well stay tuned for our 3240 review because uh we got a lot there hey guys i hope you like this look at the dell precision 3260 compact this is kind of a way to ease back into our project tiny mini micro series by adding maybe compact project tiny mini micro compact that doesn't have the same ring but overall i think uh you know this is kind of a fun way to get back into it and hey if you did like this video well, why don't you share it with your friends but also give it a like click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos as always thanks for watching have an awesome day